Okay, so I shouldn't have done that. Assalamu alaikum everyone. My name is Ibaid Mohammed Al Badur. I am a photographer and videographer here based in la la la. Let's go. I'm a photographer and videographer based in the UAE. And uh, today I'm going to be giving you guys a review about the BenQ SW320. What are we waiting for? Let's go. I've been using this monitor for a couple of months now. The bank you guys have been nice enough to uh, lend it to me just to see uh, what I thought about it. I'm just gonna talk about certain specifications that I found that kind of fit my need. Without further ado, let's get this review going. So the SW320 is a 31.5 inch monitor. It is, it is a monster monitor, yo. Like it's a, it like completely dwarfs my 15 inch MacBook Pro. It's there on the left. So the first thing, it's a 4K monitor, and uh, that's what I need because I started recording a lot of 4K video, and a lot of my clients have been asking me to do a lot more 4K content for them. So uh, the monitor works. Um, it is an LED backlit monitor with an IPS panel, which means you get really nice, bright, very fluorescent images. It goes about to around 350 nits. So just to give you a comparison, my iPhone 7 right now is at 700 nits. It's pretty bright, huh? And that's at 350. But then again, for monitors like this, you don't really care about you know how, how how strong it is. You're gonna usually work in very you know um, controlled environments. I'd like to say for my gamer friends, because I know a lot of people game are are gamers, and if you're interested in this monitor as a gamer, it has five millisecond response time, which is you know not as good as other monitors out there. The monitor's main purpose is to be a a workshop and a workhorse kind of monitor for design and video editing, but it can be used to view movies and it can be used to play games comfortably as well. One thing that I really like about this this monitor is that it has a 99% Adobe RGB color space coverage, uh, which in nature means it also covers 100% of sRGB. Now, why is that important to me? Well, I do print a lot of my photos and uh, Adobe RGB and Prophoto RGB are very accurate color renditions of my photos. What I see in the screen is what I get in real life, which is what I want or what I aspire to have. Um, sRGB is great for web-based uh, or web images. So if I'm gonna post something on Instagram, I'd usually export it in sRGB. And then if, if I'm gonna export something or print something, I actually export it in Adobe RGB or Prophoto RGB, whatever is available when I can. Last bit on color, it also has it does have a 10-bit color space, which is which is good to have. Another thing that this monitor has that I actually love, I love it has is this hot puck key, which has three custom button settings. And on each button, I've kind of set a color profile that I work with a lot. So one is Adobe RGB, the other is sRGB, and the other one is Rec.709. So my YouTube videos and other videos that I'm gonna upload are recorded on a Rec.709 kind of codec. A nice thing about the hot puck is that you can actually use it as a, as a controller instead of just the buttons on the monitor, which is also very nice for people who are gonna be switching out of color profiles a lot. The monitor, man, it's the first time I do a monitor review. I'm used to doing like, talking about lenses and stuff like that, but anyway, the monitor comes cal color calibrated from the factory, which is great, it comes with a certificate. And I've been using this monitor for a little over a month now. Editing photos on it, I've been pr browsing the web through it, I've been creating videos or vlogs the last two, three vlogs that I've created on my website have been through this monitor, or, help, or this monitor helped me a lot in terms of workflow and space because it does make a very big difference in terms of screen real estate and what you can see and, and how you can move it about, especially when it comes to editing and especially when it comes to post-processing. So in that regard, I love this monitor. If I have the choice to work on the go or work at home, I'd love working at home just because of this monitor. I was always like a on the road kind of guy, work on the back of my pickup uh, or whatever I found is uh, convenient. I go, I, I get done with a shoot, I finish the shoot and all I can think about is like, oh, I can't wait to see this on the screen. I can't wait to see this on the screen. The screen's amazing, yo. Like the rendition of colors are fantastic. The resolution is great. Not everybody needs 4K, not everybody needs 31 or 32 inch monitors or 40 inch monitors. Some people are happier with 27, some people are happier with 22. Some people are completely fine with 15 inches. And I was very fine with 15 inches until I got this baby and I'm like, yo, this is gonna, this is gonna change my life. <laughs> I actually asked the management um, if they wanted me to say anything specific about the monitor and they said no. A couple of cool guys there at the BenQ Middle East said, we believe in our monitors, we believe in their quality and their calibration and what it provides. So it will speak for itself, which you know, like 
hats off to that. I love, I love companies that kind of have that work ethos and they really do listen to their uh, clients and customers. I mean, right now I'm recording this on a Fujifilm X-T2. I know there's a bunch of camera companies out there, but I love the Fujifilm ethos, you know, about Kaizen and continual progression. And that's what BenQ really showed me. The monitor also comes with a couple of blinds right out of the box. Uh, that you could put to the sides and uh, to the uh, to the top on the sides of the monitor if you want to block out incoming light. But I don't find that I really need that just because I have um, blackouts or dark out, blackout curtains in my room. It's quite bulky. I don't really have a big desk. I mean, the screen's taking a pretty big chunk of the desk already as is. Um, but it is pretty useful, I know, for a lot of people who would be working for a long time in the office for office work. It looks also professional enough where it can be in an office, which is nice. Um, no fancy schmancy kind of things. Everything's quite functional, which is the way I like it. One other thing you can do with a monitor, which isn't you know specifically for me, but I won't use it, but I know a couple of other people would who are running multiple monitors, is that you can position the uh, monitor to be in a horizontal or vertical position straight from the stand, which is nice. Regarding the ports on the monitor, there's a couple. So you have an HDMI, you have a display port, you have a mini display port. There's two USB 3 hubs, uh, two downstream, one upstream. Card reader, which is really nice to have. So the monitor on B&H costs $1,466.53, which in dirhams is about around the 5,000 dirham, UAE dirham mark. Um, and a lot of people are gonna ask me, hey Abed, this monitor is expensive. Is it worth it? In my opinion, is that it depends. Now, do you need a 30 inch monitor? Maybe, I mean, I want it, I need it. I feel like I need something of the size or of the scale of this caliber at this point in my life and my career, because I need to produce the best possible work that I can through this monitor. I'm talking about the average consumer. If you're like an amateur photographer, a hobbyist, you have you know a good chunk of cash that you feel like, hey, you know what? It's time to get a nice new monitor, time to spoil myself, time to see my images and my videos the way they were meant to be seen digitally, then yeah, definitely recommend this monitor. But if it was a yes or no question, I'd say yes. First of all, you're getting like one of the best price for value monitors in the market today. You're gonna, and it's an investment because you're gonna keep it for years to come. People don't change their monitors every year. It's not like, it doesn't get updated as fast as other technologies. I sadly have to give this back next week, but uh, I think I got a couple of jobs where I'm gonna be putting some money on the side so I can get it sometime very soon, hopefully. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed my review of the monitors, my first review ever. If you guys have any tips or advices, keep in mind for next time, I'd be more than happy to know because there's a couple of things happening uh, down the line which I'll be checking out and I think will be of interest to you, to the photography community, to the people who are into the digital art community because um, you know we all gotta help each other i'm not here to you know i'm not here to sell a product i'm not here to push anything i haven't been paid for this you know just have to put it out there this is just my honest review about this monitor and uh yeah i just wanted to thank thank you for loaning this to me for about a month i mean i like the reviews a month overdue <laughs> um and they were really nice i mean the guys they're really understanding they're telling me to take my time and to really you know hash it out if you did like this review like subscribe and share I really appreciate it it's, it's all it's all down there up here whatever it is no matter what you're i think you're watching it on your phone probably at this point but uh i hope you liked it peace out till next time